Hello everybody, it's Force Majeure here and we have a Kerbal Space Program video. Um, I built a probe righteously called Viking 1 which is the, it's, it's very similar to the actual missions that NASA sent in the 1970s that landed a probe in addition to an orbiter around Mars. Um, so there's two experiments that are involved. I'm using the Maps app mod for my, that's when the, the first experiment of this probe it's a very powerful mod that allows you to take topographic information as well as find anomalies on planetary objects in the Kerbal Space Program. It's very useful. I highly recommend it. Um, this probe obviously has a main booster that helped us get into orbit around Duna, followed by de a decoupler that in turn attaches to a retro rocket that gets us down in the suborbital trajectory. Above that retro rocket is a heat shield, which is indicated by that rectangular looking object. A drug chute, which is probably the most useful tool during our re-entry. Um, that can be jettisoned as well with the decoupler. Uh, the most impressive feature of this Viking probe that I made is the sky crane, as you can see, which is very similar to the Curiosity sky crane of 2012. It doesn't It's not implemented exactly like it, but it's very similar and it's really cool. Uh, that, in turn, is connected to the main little rover. It looks kind of like the Pathfinder Sojourner uh, rover in the 90s um, but that that's connected to the sky crane so here we go we're, we're jettisoning the landing probe so we can make a rather precise within a couple kilometers landing on a specific point now i'm using this additional mod called mechjet this is probably the most powerful mod you can get for Kerbal space program one of its features is it allows you to land or you get if you get coordinates for your anomaly, which the MapSat program will allow you to do after you orbit a couple times, it gives you coordinates to that position, and it allows you to to land rel relatively accurate. I mean, very accurately, actually. I mean, it has an autopilot where technically you click a button and it will land your probe. It's amazing. However, I I like to do it manually. I pretty much use MechJab only as a reference tool. It's uh, that that's really how I use the mod. It's much. It's more fun for that that way for me, in my opinion. Um, so basically, the landing guidance subset of this mod is very powerful. It, it calculates two things. It calculates the atmosphere of Duna, which is pretty thick. It's basically thick enough for you to have to think about it, and you know it'll cause problems. So you you have to. Fa it's an, it's a big enough factor to make it a part of your design of your probe. Uh, but it's also thin enough where you can't just deploy chutes and just soft down nicely. You have to uh, use a drug chute. Um, another pro uh, powerful part of the landing guidance mod is it actually can it compensates for rotation. So it allows you to uh, kind of aim in advance of your target because obviously the, the planet is rotating. As you can see here, I'm actually intentionally overshooting my intended target. The red little triangle is my ideal position, and that blue triangle is just past the red triangle and that actually is on purpose the reason is is duna of course has an atmosphere and i have that drogue shoot that will basically slow me down considerably so i'm overshooting the target intentionally so that when i deploy that drogue shoot it pretty much puts me right where i need to be um, so basically we need to get ourselves from a polar orbit we're passing over the north pole of duna at the moment we're going to put ourselves in a polar orbit into a suborbital trajectory so we can land where we want to be. Again, we're aiming for about a couple kilometers distance away from our intended target. Now, with an atmosphere, that's very difficult. You know, places like the moon and even doing this moon Ike, uh, it's much easier to land precisely because there is no atmosphere. The atmosphere really is a tough, tough thing to deal with, as it is in real life. But, uh, yeah, so basically we are getting ready to conduct our burn here. 347 meters per second, that's not that much. I mean, if you look at my upper right part of the screen, that's my favorite screen in MechJab. It basically is a uh, Delta V uh, map. Think of Delta V as, as like gas in your fuel tank. It basically tells you how much energy you have to conduct operations in orbit or wherever you need to be. It allows you to transfer to planetary objects and... For man probes, it allows you to return back to Kerbin, which is obviously very important. Um, as you can see here, I have 900 meters per second pretty much left of Delta V. That's pretty much overkill. I intentionally built this probe with uh, 
more Delta V than I actually needed. Uh, th that's because I wanted the freedom to transfer around to, you know, Duna's moon if I wanted to, to adjust my eccentricity, my inclination, all that stuff. Um, one thing here that I, I really want to recommend or really just suggest in the Kerbal Space Program is if you make a mistake or your burn isn't quite perfect, you can always adjust and you can always fix your problem. That's a really important tenant to learn in Kerbal Space Program, to never worry. You can always adjust, provided you have the energy and you didn't royally screw up. But here again, I'm just going to make a slight adjustment to my trajectory. Again, 20 meters, about 20 meters per second, that's nothing. And it's really important that you actually do these corrections as early as possible because the earlier you make the corrections, the less delta V you actually use. Um, that applies for transferring to other moons. Uh, the moon, obviously, out, out, outside uh, Kerbin, the Minmus, which is the highly eccentric and inclined moon of the home planet in this game. Um, so yeah, basically we're, we're going to conduct a little correction burn here and it'll put us right on, right on course. I'm doing all this stuff manually. I'm using the, uh, <laughs> aptly named tool in MechDev called SmartAss. Of course, uh, that, that actually, it's, it's very useful. Basically you just click a button and it, it makes your heading exactly where you need it to be. But I'm actually doing the burns manually, uh, just so I have a little bit extra control. And again, it's more fun to try to do this stuff manually. Again, MechJab is just basically a resource that you can use to as just guidance, basically. Um, so yeah, we're basically there's oh there's Ike actually in the background as you can see it. I have this particular flight to Duna. I actually have a generation of four spacecraft, uh, two of which are manned by Kerbals. One uh, one probe will actually land on Mars, man landing, and the other will land on Ike. And I have two of these Viking probes, Viking one and two, obviously very similar to the real life counterparts again that I mentioned earlier uh, that contain a bunch of experiments uh, so we can basically survey Ike and Duna as we, we can also land probes and conduct experiments as well so right now I'm basically just orienting myself in line with my trajectory and obviously in the retrograde attitude um, as we begin our descent it's obviously time compression is really valuable here otherwise you'd be waiting a couple hours so we're just making a couple quick corrections. One important point, you can actually see me correct and kind of move my probe around. You want to orient your probe so that if you make movements left and right, they actually the probe will actually go left and right. If you if you don't do that, you when you try to go right, you'll go left. So all I know right now is that if I go up and down, left or right, my probe will actually do that and it won't try, translate the opposite directions. You just have to orient your probe correctly. As you can see, I just jettisoned my retro rocket. I don't need that anymore. Um, but I would argue that in this game, landing small probes on planetary objects is the hardest thing to do. And it really comes down to this thing where sometimes you'll get discombobulated and you'll try to adjust by, you know, making your probe, especially when you're burning, you have the thrusters on, you know, left and right and all that stuff. And basically, you what happens is if you don't orient the camera properly, you'll try to go one way, but you'll go the other, and your, your probe will literally burn directly towards the ground and crash and die horribly. So it's really important, again, I can't emphasize this enough, to actually orient your camera uh, in a way that actually accurately mimics the control surfaces. So as you can see here, we're getting close to actually entering the atmosphere of Duna here. We're at 30,000 meters. You probably won't be able to see the probe heat up. We're, we're going fast, technically, I mean, 1,000 meters per second, but the atmosphere, we're at such a low angle. Again, it's really important you do that low angle because your heat is diminished that we aren't really seeing the flames and all that jazz that you really see when you re-enter uh, Kerbin. So as we're, we're going here, now we're starting to hit the real atmosphere at about 12,000 meters, and we're about ready to kill the heat shield and drogue chute. 10,000 meters, that's a benchmark, and we're really close here, we're, we're going to jettison the heat shield and deploy the drogue. And we do it, and drogue shoot successful, we're looking good. So you can see here, look at look at our velocity, that drogue shoot's a huge help, it's, it's just absolutely killing our velocity, we're not using any delta V to do that. When you're dealing with Duna's atmosphere, 
it's really important that you stick to drogue shoots. Do not try to use the main shoots and, uh, you know, the, the shoots that you actually use to re, you know, to recover and splash down and, and curbing, they will simply rip off. I guarantee it to the trajectory is, is simply, you're going too fast. And if you try to deploy those shoots, they'll just rip right off and your probe will explode and burn and cost the, uh, Kerbals billions of dollars of taxpayer money. So you, you don't want to do that. Of course, you don't want to be an embarrassment. So look at that. We, we, got right between blue the blue and red triangles that's exactly where we really wanted to be again i'm not there there is a spoiler i'm trying to get to an, an anomaly i'm if it'll i'll warn you when that spoiler actually comes um i'm gonna pull up the map set mod and see actually how fat how close we landed to our target so i'll warn you in advance but uh, we are heading to an anomaly that i detected so just be wary of that um, as you can see, our word descending down into Dune at about 20 meters per second, that's pretty nice. However, that's certainly too fast to land. So as you can see here, we are about to, to uh, snip the chute and activate our sky crane to touch down nice and slowly. About 3,000 meters, again, 20, 18 or so meters per second. Just taking it nice and easy. As, and as we get closer, we snip the chute, and here we go. We deploy the sky crane to make, hopefully, a nice, soft landing. Um, really important when you're when you're dealing with thrusters in, in these gravitational environments, you've got to be really careful with how much thrust you apply. you also got to be careful about making fine adjustments. You don't want to overcompensate if you do. You know, that situation I was telling you about where you basically lose control of your spacecraft, inadvertently because of you know it'll you know misorient or whatever just take it nice and slow it's just like landing a plane except you're just dealing with uh, vertical velocity only nice and slow there we go we're we're on duna look at that now i like to leave the sky crane i technically in real life with the curiosity probe the sky crane just flew off into space or well, at least in the in Mars at in the Martian atmosphere, I like to leave it on the ground. Uh, it doesn't hurt my probe, and it also serves as a uh, yardstick when I decide to venture elsewhere. And it actually tells me how much because you can look back on the map and see how far away this little object is, our sky crane, from our intended target. And it just serves as a uh, bench or as a uh, yardstick. So here we're deploying our radio in in in, in uh, communication. Dishes that allows us to communicate with our probe that's currently still in polar orbit. Uh, we have four experiments on board. We have a barometer. Okay, we have pressure. We have a atmosphere on Duna. Oh, that's not good. Minus 31 degrees. That sure won't want to be lounging and drinking a beer out on that surface. We got gravity. That's always a good thing. And three tenths. We're three tenths gravi gravity of our home planet of Kerbin. Um, that's more than most planetary objects. I mean, of course, there's the there's a gas giant Jewel, and there's also a Venus counterpart named Eve. They obviously, I mean, the gas giant is most of its mass is the atmosphere, <laughs> so you're not really going to be landing on that. Uh, but yeah, three tenths is pretty good. The more gravity, the better, actually, to be honest, with these probes, because if you go on a, on a on a object that has less gravity or lower gravity relative to curb and you're real you're going to be experiencing trouble i mean you make one small move with your probe it'll go flying it'll flip it's just a mess so as you can see here we are uh turning on the map set mod and this is a spoiler so do not if you do, do look away i mean you, you saw the landing so that's the most important part but uh yeah this is a spoiler is coming it's coming very soon so we turn on the anomaly screen, and guess what? We are dead on. We are absolutely dead on, and I have a uh, hunch that that mountain up ahead is our target. Uh, that look, that's very, that looks pretty weird. It looks rather strange relative to the features around here. So I, I have a pretty good suspicion that that's actually our intended target. So we'll try to find out how far away we actually landed. So we're about half a kilometer now. I'd say that we're probably a couple kilometers away. We'll have to find out. This game is absolutely amazing. 
Um, it's very realistic if you treat it realistically. The, the the biggest joy is really engineering and making these little probes and uh, vehicles that travel to these places, and it's all on you. I mean, you, yes, there's 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 mods like MechJab that try, that try to make your life easier, but at the end of the day, you really have to. I mean, just let's just say you use autopilot all the way using the MechJab mod. Well, you still had to make the you know the rocket that got your probe or your manned spacecraft into orbit you know it, it's just a really great game it's a little, literally a couple hundred megabytes of memory it's a real at a really good price and it provides hours and hours of enjoyment i mean for me the big inspiration in this in this game is finding these anomalies around the kerbal uh, i guess kerbal system or you know the kerbal solar system they're scattered all around the object some have more than others duna has several i'm not gonna spoil where they are or what they are i still have to find that on my own if you notice actually in our bottom left part of the screen here with the map set mod there's a great canyon system along the equator of duna i'm actually going to visit that uh canyon system it's actually very similar to the grand canyon of mars um soon with my man probe that's currently orbiting duna at the moment that's probably where i'm gonna set foot and pl you know plant the flag uh, so to speak one key, uh, key point with this, with these probes, is you want to stay below 10 meters per second. If you go past 10 meters per second, you will be in serious trouble. Uh, you'll go too fast. You make a little correction, the thing will just go flying and explode hor horribly. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Another key thing is, have you seen the bottom left part of the screen here? I'm actually moving this rover using the docking mode. If you try to use the staging mode, which is indicated by the little rocket right now we're on the little i don't know it looks like a little round ball which is probably a thruster or something if you try to use jet uh the uh the, you know the the normal the staging mode you're going to run into serious issues you're you know because the you'll the little probe exerts torque you'll be flying all over the place so stick to docking mode when you actually use these rovers otherwise you'll be in serious trouble um so we're catching up on our target here and the train is rather interesting. I mean, it's not as good as the moon, in my opinion, but it's certainly interesting. I like the atmosphere and the nice reddish tint as well. That's that's great. So yeah, that that boulder is pretty big. Now this this probe is pretty much the same size as a you know just pretty much the scale as the Sojourner uh, probes. Maybe opportunity in some of those. So as you can see here, we are 2.2 kilometers away. That's pretty good. I, I'd say that we're three, we landed three kilometers away from our intended target, which is absolutely fantastic. In real life, I think the record for rovers on a, on a, on a foreign surface is about 30 kilometers. I think it's held by the Soviets. They landed a probe on the moon, and the they basically move the rover about 30 kilometers the close second third and fourth place however are the lunar rovers that uh, were deployed on apollo 15 16 and 17 those are just under that soviet probe uh, in terms but those were manned those were driven by man so that's pretty much more impressive really um so we're making our you know our climb to the our target and to declare victory in this endeavor so uh, that that was a great re-entry. We got within three kilometers of our target. I hope the big takeaway from this video for you all is how to design the probes and how to design the re-entry system in terms of having a retro rocket, a drogue chute to slow you down, and potentially a sky crane. I, I, I really don't think, I mean, I guess if you used a lot of parachutes, but you'd, you, know, you could technically land just using drag created by parachutes but realistically i think you're really constrained because uh, you you know you would have to deploy the drogue chute first so just use a drogue chute that's the, my biggest key or the key point to take away from this so we've reached the summit of our target so that pretty much concludes this video thanks for watching and we'll see you next time